there, folks. What you can see here, apart from the um, dog bowl, is typical of a week in the life of a locksmith. Um, I get to change a lot of locks where keys are missing. I get to uh, destroy a lot of locks when I'm out on forfeitures or the locks have failed. And typically, by the end of the week, I'll end up with a, a big bucket full of locks. As you can see, they're quite varied from uh, things like uh, multi-locks there, the five pin in pin lock, all sorts of trashy padlocks. Um, the occasional uh, three star cylinder, some unbranded things, which, uh, oh, look at the state of that. Uh, some unbranded locks, some, uh, some locks like this one. Again, that's unbranded, but this is a really high quality lock. Uh, and this probably is a, a suited lock with a restricted key profile from somewhere. Um, various padlocks that you see feature on the channel. Uh, this one's going to be quite interesting at some stage. Um, as you can see, it had to be opened quickly. Uh, there we've got uh, an MPX-6 and um, one star. Uh, your bullet locks, uh, ATKs. As you can see, basically it go, the list goes on. Um, these are quite interesting. If, if These have got a really gnarly looking keyway to them um, and I have stuck a pick in this and I've got quite a few of them all look pretty much the same um, I put a pick in those and I've got absolutely nowhere so I don't know what's going on with those but they're going to feature soon I'm sure um, anyways waxing lyrical about locks but so uh, you can see that I end up with quite a selection and a lot of these, oh, there's one that's uh, that's um, been destroyed in a door. This is quite interesting actually, because the this is the uh, the ABS three star um, with the magnetic element, and you can see that the exterior side, which is the difficult side to open, is is undamaged because the the people who installed this in their door. Um, installed it uh, the wrong way round, so they put the interior side facing outwards so that was a, a bit of fun you can see you've got a um, all sorts of uh, three star tech going on with that anyways um what i thought i would do this is the um euro spec uh, mpx6 uh, it's a one star lock i don't have a key for this um so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick it and I'm going to gut it so we can see what is inside the MPX-6. So let's just set the camera up. Um, you will notice that my, <laughs> my vice has been modified. The actual clamping part along the top there um, broke and I'm waiting for a replacement. So I've jammed this uh, pair of adjustable pliers in here and I'm clamping the locks on as follows and um, what that's done which is really quite interesting is when you're picking locks any little uh, movement on the core when pin set um, the sound is being amplified all the way through these uh, these pliers and it's making uh, it's making picking locks a lot of fun because I can um, here uh, when I'm doing things right and when the pins are being set. So, uh, okay, right, well, I'll pop that in there. And let's just, just point it up a little bit more. There we go. And what I thought I would do, and I haven't done this for a while, is I thought I'd use the, um, the leashy tool because the five pin version of these out in the field, they open all day long with the, uh, the Yale uh, 5B leashy. Um, so I thought what we'd have a go uh, is have a go at uh, opening this using this uh, using this here on the uh, on the bench. 
Right, let's just get this in focus so you can see what's going on. Now I might just zoom in a little bit, there we go, so we can see the scale. Okay, so um, with the Lishi pick, or the Lishi style pick as it is in this case, uh, always a good idea just to navigate your way through and make sure that everything lines up. So the, so the index lines on here, do they line up with the, uh, the actual pins in the lock? Um, and the answer is yes, they do, which is a good start. Uh, I wouldn't expect anything less from this. And then I'm going to just apply a light tension on there. And then I'm going to have a little explore of what's going on in the lock. So we'll start on pin six. That gave me a click almost immediately. Let's just try again. Okay, that's quite, that's quite solid. Um, let's back the tension off. And slide that pin. Okay, that pin has now graunched its way all the way up that uh, pin chamber. So if we listen, that pin has set virtually at the bottom there. Now, nearly every single um, one star lock that uh, I come across in the field will have a, a, a zero lift pin in there. Normally the zero lift pins are uh, on uh, pin one or somewhere, somewhere in the middle of the lock or even pin five, and then you'll have a, a low or a high lift pin behind. Um, looks like we've got one at the end here. So we'll leave that alone. We'll go to um, pin five, see if we get anything off that. That feels like it's not binding. Let's go to four. We've got a bit of binding on four. Okay, so we've got a click there and a jump. Let's just check five again. There's nothing on five. Six is still dead at the bottom there. Let's go to three. Okay, we've got a click on three. And we've got a nice little bit of bounce on that, uh, on that pick arm there, which suggests that's, uh, that's set. Again, that's, that's quite a reasonably um, low lift pin. Two doesn't appear to have anything on it. Let's go to one. Okay, one's binding heavily. So that's given us a nice jump. Still feels very solid there. I'm going to try pushing that higher. Oh, okay. So that's gone virtually all the way in. Let's just have a little explore the rest of the lock. Three, one, two, three, four, five, six is now tight. There's six, okay, I've got a little bit of rotation on the core there. Um, I'm expecting this to have some spool pins in here, so let's just see whether we've dropped onto a spool pin. I'm getting counter rotation on five. Yeah, there's definitely counter rotation on five. I'm almost manually feeding that in. Okay, there we go, that's set five. Um, it's still in a full set. Four feels set, three feels set, two, I'm not sure about two. Let's go to one. Okay, one. Let's just give two a little nudge. Might be a little bit of counter rotation on two there. Let's see if that sets. Ah, oh, okay, there we go. So that's got the lock. So um, what we can do is, without locking it up, let's just see what pins uh, we had on there. 
Uh, the first pin chamber is about uh, a one pin height. The second one is about a three. Third one is a seven. Fourth one, pin four is a five. Pin six is a five, sorry. <laughs> pin four is a five, pin five is a five and six. Well, the lock's opened, but I mean, that's that's hardly moved at all. So I'm gonna imagine that uh, the last pin in there, pin six is a, is a um, very clearly a, a zero lift pin, which is, seems a strange place to put it, but there you go. So uh, so there we are, we've got the lock open. Uh, the cam is turning, which is always a nice thing on a thumb turn. So we'll open the lock all the way round and there we go, we'll lock it back up again. So that just leaves me with nothing more to do than to uh, strip the lock and see what's inside. Right, so um, I've taken off the retaining clips. Uh, we don't need to do that to uh, see what's inside this cylinder, uh, pin-wise, because it can be repinned with these uh, removable plugs. Uh, let's zoom in on that. So uh, with an Allen key, you can unscrew these and then you can uh, tip the contents out. So let's put uh, chamber one over here. Get some tweezers. That's if they're going to come out. I don't think this wants to play. Let's get a pick in there. See if we can nudge that down. There we go. Now that's interesting. Um, we've got a little mini wafer inside there which suggests to me that this is a master key lock. Well, you know, well, what do you know? So let's just uh, pop those key pins at the top there. And uh, we've got a nice spool pin there in the bottom. <laughs> Right, I've just finished the uh, gutting of this uh, Euro spec MPX6 one star and it's revealed quite a, an interesting set of co uh, contents. Um, all of the driver pins are these uh, steel spools. Um, so they're going to act as uh, obviously security pins but also as a, a drilling deterrent in the uh, in the lock. But the um, the key pins were the interesting part because this is master suited. So we've got the master wafers. Some of them are absolutely tiny, um, sitting in the, uh, in the key pin chambers. Um, so obviously there would have been more than one key for this. And we were right about pin chamber uh, six because the, um, the key pin there is a zero lift. So that would act as a um, anti-pick and also possibly an anti-bump uh, feature as well. And while we're talking about anti-bump, the pins in uh, position two and uh, position five are both um, steel pins with a little ledge on them. And if we look at the core itself, the drillings in position two and five are slightly wider than the rest. So if we pick this pin up and drop it in there, um, there you go, get in there. You can see that that pin 
fits quite nicely into the uh, into uh, chamber five. If we tip that out and try and put it in any of the other um, pin chambers, it will not fit. It'll only go so far in. So there we are in six. As you can see, it doesn't drop down. It just sort of sits there. So just um, position two and position five have been drilled out wider to accommodate um, this particular pin. And that ledge on that pin that you can see, if we pop the uh, tweezers down the side of that pin chamber, um, all of the pin chamber, normal pin chambers are, are completely um, smooth. And then if we go in down the, the pin chamber five and two, there's a little ledge inside there that's been, um, that's been machined in there that that pin sits on. And what it does is in relation to all the other key pins, it, it's obviously keeping it slightly higher up um, so that if when, the, like for example, like that, so when a bump key goes in, it'll influence these pins, but it will not touch uh, the uh, these anti-bump pins. So this lock has got an awful lot of protection on it. From an anti-drill perspective, obviously you've got uh, the two steel pins on the top and you've got uh, um, the six um, steel spools, anti-drill spools on the bottom. If you look at the core itself, you've got uh, two pins there at the front, anti-drill pins. Um, and then if we look at the lock cylinder, lock body, again, you've got a, yeah, another two anti-drill pins sitting at the front there. So it's quite formidable. <coughs> Excuse me, there's a lot of, um, uh, there's a lot of drill protection going on here. And then as you can also see, you've got this uh, sacrificial cut. Um, so if somebody attacks the cylinder uh, in a snapping attack, then this is gonna come away they still won't have access to the cam and there will still be three pins left to uh, to protect the lock. Um, obviously, if you're absolutely desperate and you're trying to get in as a locksmith uh, and you wanted to destroy the lock, you could snap that off and give yourself a bit of a more of a chance because there would only be three pins left to pick. But um, obviously, we're talking about non-destructive entry here. So... Uh, uh, and then the inside the actual um, cylinder itself, I can't see any anything going on there. All of the, uh, um, everything feels quite normal. Uh, and of course we've got these threaded inserts at the back that allow allow you to uh, repin this quite clearly as it has been into uh, a master suited lock. So all in all, there's quite a lot going on inside there. Um, Anti-pick, anti-bump, anti-drill, and anti-snap. It, it really is a, uh, a sacrificial section snap. Is um, very much a reality with this lock. So for a one-star lock, it's got a lot of protection going on inside there. Even um, if we look at the cam mechanism, for example, that lives on the back of this, uh, on the back of the plug, um, what it's doing is it's shielding the um uh, the cam so you can't you don't have access to the cam or direct ac access to the cam from uh, from when you're at the front of the of the course so you can't bypass you can't use a bypass tool on this so uh, so they've even thought about that so there's no thumb turn bypass going on right okay well um, <clears throat> that's me wax lyrical about this long enough. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put this back together and uh, if any of you would like to have this lock, would like me to send it to you so you can have a go at picking it yourself and maybe gussing it and seeing this for yourself, then uh, drop me a comment below and um, I, will, uh, I will pick a name at random in uh, a few days' time and... Um, that person will be sent this lock so they can have a go at it themselves. All right, well, there we are. That's the end of this uh, pick and gut of the uh, Eurospec uh, MPX6 One Star. I hope you enjoyed it and um, see you on the next one. Bye for now. In. Go on, in. <laughs>